Welcome back to Sip the Tally Fan. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And with training camp officially starting for veterans this Saturday and then starting for rookies last Saturday, I wanted to talk to you about some storylines that I felt to be interesting coming up for training camp this season. I have five of them. Let's get into it. Let's get started. So first up, number one on my list, Jalen Norma Davis and Pepe Williams versus Nate Wiggins and TJ Temple. The reason I have this as a storyline for me is Jalen Norman Davis, Pepe Williams have had injury issues, problems getting on the field, problems staying on the field, problems being productive since being drafted um, a couple years ago. Now, you think two young cornerbacks, you know, playing behind Marlon, playing behind Brandon Stevens would get in the mix some kind of way. And I think Jalen Norman Davis has had more opportunity and Pepe, because Pepe's, for the most part, been hurt. Jalen Norman Davis has been in there, then gotten hurt. Pepe's been almost been hurt. But for them to turn around and draft two more young guys, and Nate Wiggins and TJ Temple, I think it's going to be real interesting to see, especially taking Nate Wiggins in the first round, it's going to be real interesting to see what becomes of Jalen Norman Davis and Pepe. Now, Pepe, I really like. I really like. I like his tenacity i like his you can tell he plays with a chip on his shoulder being a smaller guy and he fights for 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 every piece of pt he can get so every rep you see him fight and that's probably one of the reasons why he stays hurt because he goes 100 percent every snap he don't take a snap off in practice or a training camp or whenever he gets a chance because he got to feel like he got to prove himself every time so it's going to be interesting to see where they fall in line versus T.J. Tampa and Nate Wiggins, and how how much of a leash does uh, the defense give the rookies versus these two guys that have been there for a couple of years and can't seem to, for the sake of, you know, talking, can't get right. All right, the second one, who would be the number two receiver? Now, we're looking at our wide receivers. We know Zay is pretty much number one. I'm going to go through the list of guys that are on there now. And, you know, trying to figure it out. We know Bateman should be the number two receiver. And I, I say should be with a capital, should. <laughs> but it's Deontay Hardy, who's probably going to be a return guy. Bateman, Cunningham's been transferred to receiver. Nelly, Tyler Wallace, Dayton Wade, who's a UDFA. They drafted Walker, Sean Ryan, uh, Ishmael, who's a, uh, both, I think both of those guys are UDFAs. Sean Ryan was a UDFA last year. Isaiah Washington uh, and Keith Kirkwood. Now, a lot of those names don't really matter. It's really Sha Bateman, Devontae Walker, Nelly. Out of those three guys, who's going to be the number two receiver? Now, it should be Rashad Bateman. should be. And Rashad looks and seems to be healthy. I think the only thing that will keep Rashad Bateman from being the number two receiver is chemistry. Um. Do they have time to get their chemistry back up in training camp? Yep. They do. Certainly do. Will they get it back up in training camp? Don't know. Don't know. I'm one of the guys that believe you, you know, you do as much as you can in the offseason to get chemistry up. But you don't have to do it because you're grown. You're professionals. You, you train how you want to train. I just one of them guys like, I was it. I would do everything in my power to, to get my chemistry up with my quarterback, especially if finances wasn't an option or like I had to take care of some stuff for my family. If you got to do some family stuff, that's one thing. If finance, if you're struggling financially, that's another thing. But if neither one of them two things is an issue, I'm trying to get my quarterback and catch many balls and make sure my outs is thrown on time and my tent, my deep outs and my posts. I'm, that's just me. But I know everybody ain't, don't feel the same way. I understand. That's me. All right, number three. The three offensive line holes. We got a hole at left guard. We got a hole at right guard. We got a hole at right tackle. Uh, left guard, projected, Voorhees. 
even though this is technically his second season, it'll be his rookie season because he set out the entire last year with the uh, leg injury that he suffered. Um, I don't know if he suffered it at the combine or right before the combine, but I know at the combine he he still bench pressed 39 reps with the um, hurting his legs. So I think he heard it at the combine last year. Um, so he's projected to be the left guard. Competition for him, I think, is uh, Josh Jones, if I'm not mistaken. Let me look at real quick. Johnson, or, yeah, Josh Jones. Um, then at right guard, Ben Cleveland, who should win that job. I'm not sure who's going to be in a competition with Cleveland. Will it be Salah? Maybe Salah may be in a competition on the other side. I'm not sure what which side Salah is going to fit in. Um, then at right tackle, you got the rookie Roger Rosengardner and Falele. Uh, in my mind, it should be Voorhees, Ben Cleveland, Rosengardner. I'm not a huge fan of Lele. Maybe he's lost some weight and gotten better with his footwork, but off of stuff I've watched last year and then the year before, to me, Lele is not a tackle. That's what that's to me. That, and I'm, that's strictly my opinion. I, I don't think he moves well enough to be a tackle. I think he he opens the gate too easily for, for Ezra um, in the past game. In the run game, if he get his hands on you, you pretty much erased because he's just that big. He's a mountain of a man. But pass game wise, he's too much of a liability. You gotta you gotta put too much help over there for him to, to help him out. Now, um, Rosengarten, who's kind of light in the pants, they're two opposites. But Rosengarten has pass pro during that, his entire career because all he did was throw the ball and watch. And they ran it some. They ran it. Uh, they ran what we probably going to run a lot of this year's on. So. I think Rosengardner, I, I'd rather take my lumps with Rosengardner than take my lumps with Falele, who's in year three, if not year four. That's but that's me. All right, storyline number four. Will David Ojabo finally help the defense? David Ojabo was drafted while injured at the combine, ironically. Um hadn't played a lot of snaps. Not at all. In fact, let me pull up. Let me pull up Ojabo. See what what kind of numbers Ojabo has. So in Ojabo's career, he has a hundred and six snaps total. One hundred six snaps. One hundred and six snaps total. Two sacks. Three total pressures. At this point. He needs to ingratiate himself into the defense. He needs to stay healthy and at least be an option to get snaps. Right? Not necessarily be this 8, 9, 10 sack guy, but be on the field, get snaps. Snaps. All I'm asking for is snaps. Snaps. And then the other stuff will probably start to come back, but stay on the field and help the defense. And so we don't have to go pick up Joe Blow off the street in week six. All right. I ain't going to dive into the uh, you know who when I talk about Ojabo today. And if you know who he is, you know who I'm talking about, put it in the comment section. When every time I talk about Ojabo, another name comes to mind. And if y'all know who I'm talking about, put it in the comment section. Uh, and lastly, is Trent Simpson ready to fill in for Patrick Queen? Um, a lot of People are really hopeful that that Queen, I mean, sorry, that Simpson is the guy or that can be the guy to fill in for Pat Queen. And I'm I'm not saying he can't. I don't think it'll happen instantly, though. Um, I'm hopeful that it'll happen this year. I think at the earliest, it'll start to click for him middle toward the end of the season. I think he's going to have to get in these games and this is probably going to sound hypocritical, but he's going to probably have to slow down, which is what Patrick had to do. Patrick had to slow down to start being better. And that probably sounds super hypocritical because you want your guys to play as fast as possible. But sometimes you can play too fast. And playing too fast, you miss tackles, you miss reads, you overrun stuff. 
you just got to slow down and play with your eyes and let your instincts take over. You, you ain't got to be gone that fast. Let it develop. Then go make your play. It's, it, you can be too fast on defense. Because if you, if, you, if you play against a zone team, and you overrun the outside zone and you overplay and try to get to the edge for the back, the back gonna cut that thing on the backside, probably hit his head on the goalpost. So I think Trent Simpson can feel Pat, Pat's shoes, but I don't think it's gonna happen instantly. I think it's gonna happen later on in the season toward that, that back half, that stretch run. If not next year, I think we're just gonna have to hold on. And if he comes in and does it early in the season, defense is gonna be lights out. Defense is gonna be lights out. Lights out. And I think. I just don't want Roe to overcompensate for a trend and then start messing up in his own job. But those are the five storylines I got looking forward to at the beginning of training camp. And who knows what's going to transpire once training camp starts off. But again, the rookies are already there. The veterans report this Saturday. And um, we got football back, baby. So I appreciate you guys for coming out. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Uh, like the video if you like what you saw. If you have not subbed already, please do so. Hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of this content drops because it's almost go time. I appreciate y'all and I'll see y'all soon. Peace and love.